Armenia has returned four villages in Azerbaijan's western Guzak region. The relevant decision has been made during the eighth meeting of the State Commission on the delimitation of the state border of Azerbaijan and Armenia. The returned villages are Ashagia Skipra, Beganish Aram, Gizili Hasili, and Kiremli. This was the first case of border delamination between the two neighboring countries since the collapse of the Soviet Union. According to the signed document, at the initial stage of the delimitation process, the parties previously agreed on the passage of separate segments of the borderline directly between the settlements of Baganis in Armenia, Baganis Aram in Azerbaijan, Baskapar in Armenia, Ashagia Skipra in Azerbaijan, Karans in Armenia, Kirimli in Azerbaijan and Berkabur, Armenia, Gizilgajili in Azerbaijan in order to bring them into line with the legally justified inter-republican border that existed within the Soviet Union at the time of its collapse. In line with the agreement, the delimitation process will take into account the clarification of coordinates based on geodetic measurements on the ground, which will be formalized by a relevant protocol that must be signed by the sides by May 15, 2024. It should be noted that Azerbaijan raised the issue of returning the border villages in Gazak after the Second Karabakh War back in 2020. Since then, intensive work has been carried out in this direction. Azerbaijan warns France, Baku to take all essential measures. It is well known that despite the French side having played the role of a mediator for nearly 25 years, due to Azerbaijan's consent, the country has taken open and explicit anti-Azerbaijani actions following the 2020 patriotic war. Spokesperson of Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Azerbaijan, Akian Hajizada, said, Notwithstanding France's accusation against Azerbaijan of unilateral actions, Azerbaijan's steps and official statements toward France have only been in response to this country's destructive activities. Despite the smear campaign against Azerbaijan, the dialogue channels have always been kept open on Azerbaijan's side, the spokesman said. In particular, France's actions over the past three and a half years have seriously put under question the efforts to normalize relations between Azerbaijan and Armenia based on sovereignty and territorial integrity and contributed to the escalation of the situation. France's initiatives against Azerbaijan in documents and resolutions at the UN Security Council, the European Union, the Francophonie and other international platforms have proven that this country's claims of being a neutral mediator are completely unfounded. We also would like to recall the adoption of decisions and resolutions by the French Parliament solely based on initiatives of the ruling party's representatives where numerous unfounded accusations, insults and threats have been made against our country that questioned and undermined Azerbaijan's territorial integrity and sovereignty and recognized the former puppet regime. During this period, the attacks against our embassy and damage caused to the embassy premises as a result of the Azerbaijanophobic environment existing in France and lastly vandalism acts against the bust of the 19th century Azerbaijani poetess Koshid Banu Natavan and the failure of the government to take measures against such actions are part of France's anti-Azerbaijani campaign. At the same time, accusations against Azerbaijan for taking unilateral actions are completely unfounded, bearing in mind actions by France targeting Azerbaijan's presidency of the 29th Conference of the Parties to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. At the same time, it is clear as day that the actions of France, which is extensively arming Armenia and promoting militarism in the region, do not serve peace. The Azerbaijani side has repeatedly stated to France that speaking in a language of threat and pressure will not bring any results and once again declares that it will take all necessary measures to protect its national interests, Hajizada said. China's largest bank refuses to accept Yuan, China's largest bank, ICBC, as well as three other credit institutions, China Citic Bank, Industrial Bank, Bank of Taizhou and Bank of China have stopped accepting payments from Russia in Yuan, sources in the Russian business community told Izvesha. According to them, the situation worsened sharply at the end of March. About 80% of transactions began to be returned to the senders. 
Today, transferring yuan to China is a big problem, which is why the import of equipment in April was difficult, noted one of the publication's interlocutors. A small amount of payments are made through small Chinese financial institutions, another source said, but they are also beginning to follow the example of large banks and introduce restrictions, says Alexei Razumovsky, commercial director of the Empire Rus company. Payments going to China first hang for a long time, then the client is asked to fill out additional forms, a check begins, and then the operation is refused without explanation, Razumovsky said. The information was confirmed by the General Director of the Business Council at the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Alexei Egamin. According to him, payments for industrial goods have become especially complicated, but payments for consumer products are still going through. New restrictions are associated with the risk of secondary sanctions from the United States, reminds General Director of First Group, JSC, Alexei Poroshin. He emphasized, despite Russia's friendship with China, Chinese banks are not going to enter into confrontation with Western regulators. Problems with settlements began at the end of December 2023, after U.S. President Joe Biden allowed the U.S. Treasury to impose secondary sanctions against companies and financial organizations of third countries for cooperation with Russia. At first, Chinese banks refused to accept payments from Russia in dollars because they were tracked by the United States. But already in January, several credit institutions refused to conduct transactions in yuan. Among them are Ping An Bank and Bank of Nongbo. The Bank of China also began requesting data on whether the operation is connected with the self-proclaimed LPR, DPR, Crimea, Iran, North Korea, Cuba or Syria. In addition, the bank clarified whether the sender or recipient of the payment is related to the Russian armed forces.